right? Um, we are first year experience programs. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining us today. Now we're gonna introduce our panelists. First, we have Dr. Kent Porterfield, who is our new Vice Provost for Student Affairs. We have Dr. Christiana Holmes, who is the Director of Health and Counseling Service. Next, we have Dr. Kelly Alvarado-Young, who is the Director of First Year Experience Program. Um, next, we have John Wheeler, who is the Director of our um, Residence Life. And then we have me, I'm our student moderator. Um, and then our tech support is Justin Gambo. Just a reminder for some Zoom etiquette, Zoom etiquette um, please put all of the questions in the Q&A box. We're gonna leave the chat function for um, links mentioned throughout the um, webinar. And then make sure and see if your question has already been asked. We don't wanna crowd the Q&A section too much. And then a final reminder, this will be posted on the orientation website. Next, we're gonna um, take it over to Kelly to talk more about orientation. You're muted, Kelly. Thank you. Oh, that always has to happen. So, hey, Zags, we are so excited to have you on campus starting August 26th through 31st, or having you join us virtually August 26th through 31st. So I'd like to go over some of the various orientation styles that you will have the opportunity to engage with. And we are planning on hosting an in-person multi-day orientation in which you will be in a small group of eight to 10 first year students alongside an orientation leader. And that program will start on the day of your move in. We'll focus on community building, which will have small groups, advisor meetings, affinity groups, and experiential sessions that you will get to sign up for here within the next week. And our check-in process will be a one-stop check-in for housing and new student orientation, where you will check in the Herrick Quad on the day of your orientation move-in. For those of you who are choosing to do our virtual orientation, we're really excited to host a multi-day synchronous program where, again, you are going to get the opportunity to be in a small group of eight to ten first-year students, and your program will start on Wednesday, August 26th, and it will run all the way through Monday, August 31st. We will focus on community building, which is the zag way through small group meetings, advisor meetings, an illusionist, uh, and also getting to attend an icebreaker game called Playfair. Plus, with the virtual orientation, you will have the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one mentorship from your small group leader. Additionally, we will make sure that you will receive the same 10 core orientation sessions that our in-person students will be receiving. And for this, program, you do not need to register or do any additional responses at this point. We will be contacting you next week with some follow-up information regarding things that you will need to do to get ready for virtual orientation. And this will be done via MyGU and Zoom. So I highly encourage if you are participating in virtual orientation, start to familiarize yourself with those two important pieces of GU technology. And for our transfer veteran and returning adult students who are interested in doing a one day orientation program, that will be Friday, August 28th. And there you will also build community through your small groups, academic sessions, and specific transfer veteran and returning adult student programming. And that check in process will also occur on campus at Herrick Quad. So here is an overview of orientation week. We understand that there's a lot of moving parts and believe us, we have a lot going on here as well. So we are right in there with you. We wanna let you know that we will be welcoming about 200 returning students to campus or virtually who will receive orientation leader training. We will have orientation leaders participating in both the in-person and virtual orientation programs. There will be a pre-arrival bridge program. So if you are already registered for that program, that is a program that is a social justice leadership program for students from underrepresented student backgrounds. And then on Wednesday, August 26th through the 31st, we'll have our virtual new student orientation. And then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, your orientation experience, if you are in person, will begin the day that you move in. 
Transfer Orientation, as I shared, will be a one-day program that will be on campus in a hybrid format, Friday, August 28th. And then, can you believe it? You will start your college experience at Gonzaga University, Tuesday, September 1st. So let's give a little bit more information about the in-person experience, and then we'll follow up with some more specific information about the virtual student experience. So for our in-person program, you will be put into small groups with one orientation leader. And this group is the group that you will stay with throughout the entire week of orientation. You will be meeting in classrooms, socially distanced while wearing face coverings and getting the opportunity to participate in programming that will be occurring via Zoom into the classroom. So it's a great way to start you on what classes might be like, especially if you're taking remote hybrid courses. Registration will be required and the registration will be emailed to your ZAG mail on Tuesday, August 11th. And the parts that you are registering for are the affinity groups, which are groups that you will be meeting over the entire week, and experiential sessions. These are some sessions that will be occurring once throughout the entire week of orientation. And as I shared earlier, the transfer veteran returning adult student orientation will be on Friday. So this is an example of what a programming day will look like in person. So in the morning from about eight to 12, you will have your how to zag core sessions. And I just wanna clarify that these are blocks of times. So eight to 12 will include your small group check-in, your icebreakers, and then your sessions as well as some breaks. But just to give you an idea of what you're doing in the morning, it will be those how to zag sessions. You will have the opportunity to eat lunch with your small group that day, and then you get the opportunity to attend the affinity sessions that you've signed up for. So these are self-selected small groups that meet in regards to a topic area. So an example that we have out of the School of Science and Engineering, we have the Baja car. We have an affinity group for dance. So for those of you that are passionate about dance, you get the opportunity to meet some upper class eggs and participate in a small group learning a routine over the week. And we have some additional sessions that are focused on specific groups. So if you are in the honors program, you have an aff honors affinity group that will occur during that block of time from one to three. Then during the three to five time, Time block, you'll get the opportunity to select an experiential activity. And these will be activities that happen once on that day, and then you get the opportunity to select what activity that is. So it might be participating in a spike ball tournament. It might be a game of cornhole. It might be joining for trivia, or it might be going out for a hike to Bowl and Pitcher, which is one of our local parks here in Spokane, alongside GU Outdoors. So there are lots of opportunities, and you will get that registration process to select the opportunity that best speaks to you August 11th. And then finally, we'll have nighttime activities, which will occur from 8 to 10. And these will be some of the similar programs that our virtual students are participating in. So we will have a virtual play fair, which is play fair is a giant icebreaker that is hosted via Zoom. And our staff actually had the opportunity to participate in it, to check it out and see how it how it works and it was actually super cool. We had the opportunity to play a, a rock paper scissors tournament with over 200 people. It got crazy and it was a lot of fun getting to meet folks even in the virtual sense. So this will be a great opportunity for our students in person and our students who are going to be virtual to get to meet additional Zags. And then on Monday of orientation, this will be your academic day you will have the opportunity to participate in an academic convocation, which is the official welcome to the academic community. And you'll be meeting with your advisors as well as getting to know your school or college. So this is a day in the life of the in-person programming. So if you are moving in on Friday, August 28th, you would be doing the schedule on the left where you'll be moving in during your move-in window 
and you will have your first small group meeting at 430. You will get the opportunity to meet the other students that are in your small group as well as your orientation leader. And that'll be our opening ceremonies with President McCullough, who will be joining us live via Zoom so that he can be the most present and engaged with you. And then students will have the opportunity to have dinner with your families or dinner with your new ZAG friends that you're meeting from 6 to 8.30. And then we ask that you return to campus and be ready for your first hall meeting by 9 o'clock. And those will happen in your residence halls. That will be the same schedule for students who are moving in on Wednesday and Thursday. So if you are part of the Wednesday and Thursday group that has already moved in, on Friday, you will be participating in the following program. So you'll have breakfast on your own and check in with your small group about nine o'clock in the morning. Then you will go to your first How to Zag session, which will be self-care and resilience skill building at 10 a.m. And those will be hosted in your classroom and will have a content at subject matter expert, one of our wonderful staff and faculty folks, presenting the topic to you and going over some of the information that is very important for you to know. And then you will be participating in small group discussion with your orientation leader. There'll be opportunities for reflection, for making meaning of what's going on, and to ask the inevitable questions that are gonna come up about your transition to Gonzaga. Then you'll get a quick little break there, and then you start your next section, which will be transition and leadership. And we'll talk about how do you start to develop your leadership skills as you're in the midst of this amazingly big and unknown transition. And while half of the group is going to the Hatta Zag session, the other half of the group will be going to lunch. And then you will switch. So the group that's at lunch will come back to their classroom for their how to zag session. And the group that finished how to zag session number two will go to lunch. And then in the afternoon, this is that part that's gonna be really exciting where you get to choose what it is that you want to engage with in the afternoon. You'll have your affinity groups and we will be offering campus tours Thursday through Sunday of orientation. These campus tours will be small group and do require registration. So when you register in the registration portal, you'll have the option for campus tours. And we are working really hard with our student leader staff to get them prepared to give you a tour around campus because we understand for many Zags, you might not have had the opportunity to visit campus. We encourage you to bring your class schedule with you to the campus tours so that we can show you where your rooms are if you'll be taking any in-person or hybrid uh, classes. And then you'll do dinner on your own from five to eight and we'll do some virtual nighttime programming. So let's go over the virtual new student orientation. These sessions will be hosted via Zoom and we encourage you, if you have not logged into your Gonzaga University Zoom account, please go ahead and do that. You can find the links via MyGU or by contacting our Information Technology Services Help Desk, ITS. You will have the opportunity to meet with a super group. So a super group is a group of small groups within a larger group. So you will be in a small group of eight to 10 first years, and then a part of a super group that will be 40 to 50 first years. So this way you will get the opportunity to get to meet students who are in your small group as well as opportunities to meet other students that are taking classes virtually with you. We will be working with our orientation leaders to provide them a lot of training so that they are the best prepared to engage you online. They'll be getting training on using multimedia video, structured Zoom chats, breakout room games, and of course, facilitation skills for virtual environments. We want you to know, even if you will be attending programming virtually, you will have an opportunity to engage and connect with other student leaders here at Gonzaga. So this is what your programming day would look like for our virtual groups. So you would have your How to Zag sessions and you will be doing your sessions in the morning from eight to 12. And again, that's just the block of time. And then during the middle of the day, 
you have the opportunity for some of your own self-directed scheduling as well, similar to what our in-person students are doing. You will have the opportunity to connect one-on-one -on -one with your orientation leader, and there'll be opportunities for additional small group uh, super group time where you'll get to do some connecting with other students who are outside of your small group. Then you'll have the evening activities, which will be available to you where both the in person and virtual students will be engaging together. And then on Monday of orientation, you will also have your academic programming. So here's a day in the life of a virtual orientation student. So you'll participate in your HADAZAG programming. So this example here, you would be participating in self-care and resilience skill building from 10 to 1045. You'll have a quick break and then you would go into your second session. And then the rest of your day will be scheduled around you and your uh, super group and small groups. So you get to decide what to do with that. And we really encourage you to stay engaged with our student leaders who are so excited to get to work with you. And then of course you get the nighttime programming. So we're rounding out orientation by talking a little bit about Hallmark programming. Welcome Mass is one of our first masses that all students are invited to. It will be held virtually this year on Sunday, August 30th at 7.30 p.m. So this is open to all faiths and spiritual journeys and we encourage you to participate. For academics, all students will have advisor meetings that will occur either in person or virtually. Class schedules are now out, so if you haven't seen it yet, please check out ZagWeb. And if you have any schedule changes or concerns with your schedule, such as an instructor's not listed on your schedule, which was a question that was submitted, please contact Academic Advising and Assistance. They are currently doing all of their class scheduling right now. So you can set up a phone call or a Zoom meeting and be able to meet with an academic advisor to identify and answer whatever questions you have coming up about your schedule. We do encourage you, please purchase your books. That's super helpful. And if you need to identify what books you need, you can look in ZagWeb for information on how to gain access to class syllabus and see what books are available or by checking out the Zag shop and inputting your class schedule and it'll tell you what books you need. And of course, you are welcome to order books from the Zag shop and pick them up here, or you can order books from any other locations that you might be able to find books like Amazon or Chegg. And we encourage you to also check in ZagWeb for the mode of instructional delivery. You'll be able to see which classes on your schedule are going to be hosted in person, remote, or hybrid. And that is something that can be done now. And if you need directions on how to do it, check out our social media at Zag first year on Instagram, our wonderful student Lexi went ahead and gave picture directions on how to check that information. So please check that out. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to Dr. Porterfield, who will talk about what campus is going to be like. So we have a lot in common because it, what will be new to you this fall will also be new to me uh, as a, a newcomer to the university. I just arrived actually uh, in, in um, July, 1st of July, although I was involved with our pandemic response planning um, really from May on. So um, I, let me just say that, that none of what you're going to experience probably on campus is going to be exactly what you had anticipated a few months ago. I think that would be fair to say. And we're learning alongside you at the same time. But one thing that you can count on is that there are going to be some, um, some public health directives, I think, that are going to be consistent regardless of the kinds of activities that you're going to be inv involved in. We're going to be asking students, obviously, to be monitoring their health every day. Uh, we're going to be asking students to let us know if they're uh, exhibiting any kind of symptoms or if they feel like they've been exposed. We're going to ask students to socially distance from one another at least six feet away. So you're going to see uh, most of the activities um, that we have uh, in person are going to be small group activities scaled to small group. 
So the kinds of large functions that you might think of as happening on the college campus have to be reduced down in scale to smaller groups. Um, everybody will be wearing face coverings. That's faculty, staff, students, um, in class, out of class. Um, John Wheeler will talk about some of the exceptions in the residence hall, but for the most part, we're gonna be asking um, everybody at the university to be wearing face coverings and practicing you know, good hand sanitation. So that means washing your hands often. That means using hand sanitizer kind of before, during, and after activities. Um, and it means that the dining activities on campus will mostly be grab and go. Um, what I can tell you about dining is that um, we'll remove, we will have removed a lot of the furnishings to reduce the scale. So any in dining will be observing the kind of physical distancing that we're um, asking students to observe in all of their activities. So um, we're gonna be asking students and to use the, the outside, the outdoors a lot, to grab things and to go out, to spread out. So much of what we're going to be doing this fall is about spreading out. Um, so uh, whether we have a small group activity inside, it's gonna be in a much larger space than it would ordinarily be in. Um, and we will encourage limited in dining. Now that's not to say that there won't be times when students will dine in, but the occupancy in all those dining facilities is gonna be much smaller than um, would have been the case otherwise. Um, we are going to provide student services and student affairs programs, clubs and activities to students in a variety of ways. Um, some of that will be in person um, and a lot of that will be remote and through virtual um, uh, medium or through uh, online activities. Uh, we've learned a lot about how to do that. And in some respects, we're actually doubling our efforts because we're providing a program that's pretty robust for students in both regards. I will say that we get lots and lots of questions, kind of granular questions about what student life is gonna be. And one of the things we just wanna remind you is that we're asking students to pose their questions and to enter, engage in a dialogue with us because um, there isn't a single answer. Oftentimes the circumstances for student activities vary widely um, and a dialogue helps us get to yes a lot of the time um, rather than to, to be in a Q&A kind of exchange with the students. It's really talk to us about what you're trying to achieve and then we will work with you to try to figure out ways to do that that still observe the public health and safety requirements um, that we're asking everybody at the university to observe. I'm gonna click that slide. So some things to think about. Um, we have put out a guide that to, for students to return to campus and we were just putting out a guide for um, graduate and, and law students as well. So two separate guides. Those are on the Zagon website. And the point I'd like to make is as we put that out, we recognize that that document will change because as you raise questions and point out where you see gaps, uh, we're trying to address those issues. So my recommendation to you is to frequently check back. Uh, we sent out a questionnaire to you on August 3rd that was due back on August 9th. And really that is to get some additional information from you to find out what your plans are whether you intend to still live in housing, whether you intend to attend all your classes virtually. Um, and it also helps us then I think understand how we can better respond to your particular needs. Um, as of early this week, so let's say Monday or Tuesday of this week, we will be sending out a follow-up communication and that communication will be giving you some direction, new students some direction on how to complete the notice and acknowledgement uh, of student risk. So that means as you've read this student return to campus, there's then an expectation that you will read and acknowledge um, that you understand what's being asked of you and that you understand that, that returning to campus, if that's what We want to make sure that as you come back that you're thinking through all the options and that you're making the choice that works for you. So we're going to ask you to complete and and one thing I need to let you know about that is that at some point by probably uh, August 28th, if you haven't completed that, there could be a hold placed on your enrollment. So we're asking every student to do that. 
Um, you will get information about how to complete that. Most likely it will be when you log into Zag Web, but we will provide a complete set of, of, um, of recommendations and details for how you access that particular responsibility as early as Monday, if not um, on Tuesday of this coming week. Um, sorry, I just didn't see the, the slide. It switched there. Um, the place to always go for information about any COVID-19 or any pandemic response issues for the campus is the Zagon um, website. So it's www.gonzaga.edu forward slash Zagon. That's the place where we are trying to collect all of the questions and provide responses. So even though questions come in through a variety of places, um, those questions are then fed back to our marketing and communications area. And they are then putting those questions and responses up on that site. So if you check back fairly frequently, you should be seeing some change. Um, you can see the detailed plans there for our pandemic response task force. We have tried to lean those plans down into uh, a more accessible and readable document for you. That's the guide for arrival and, and return to Gonzaga. And inside that guide, as well as on the Zagon website, there are a lot of resources and contact information, virtually almost everything you might be able to think about. And there's also a way for you to submit questions there. So um, it's important if you do have questions that you continue to submit those and we're committed to try to provide the best responses that we can. In some cases, I will tell you that there is some trial and error here, that, that we're not always gonna have uh, an exact answer to some of the questions, but typically we can at least talk to you about process um, and we are committed to doing that. This is the Zag hotline. So if, you're, if you uh, prefer to, to talk to somebody, this would be the way to do that. We'd ask you to route your calls there and this hotline is then routing calls out to the appropriate area. So it's 509-313-7040. Um, and please take advantage of that because that hotline is set up for you. We wanna be responsive to your questions and concerns. Uh, and that's a good way to, to be in contact with us, with us and to make sure that your, your question and your call gets routed to the right place. John, I think this is your, your slide. Hi, Future Zags. My name is John Wheeler. Just to reintroduce myself, I'm the Director of Residence Life on campus. And I know that a lot of folks have questions about their living experience and what is going to be, um, what they're going to come to um, here in the next few weeks. And so I'm happy to answer any of your questions after we're done if I don't get to what your specific question is at this point. But Overview, uh, we have move in uh, for this fall semester happening uh, from August 26th through the 28th for our new students and our transfer students. Our move in website is up to date and will show maps for how you get to campus, where you park, how you do your check in. It's a one stop shop, so you'll pick up your new student orientation information. You will um, also then pick up your ZAG card if you don't have it already, and then we will give you your housing key. At that point, um, our parents can check into parent orientation on Foley Lawn, which is right next to Herrick Lawn. Um, and at that point, when everybody's checked into their orientation experience and have their keys and, and ready to go, then we ask you to move uh, into your residence hall. Um, we'll show you where to go, how to get close to your residence hall to be able to unload your belongings and get settled so that you can begin your orientation experience. So some items to think about when you're coming to campus, um, things that you will absolutely need would be, um, you know, any kind of uh, personal protective equipment. And the university will be providing uh, face coverings for you, but you might also want to bring with you uh, disinfectant spray, disinfectant wipes, um, uh, you know, any kind of material that, that would help you sanitize your space or, and feel comfortable in your living environment. So we have a full list of those items on our website as well. 
obviously bedding, computer, hangers, laundry bag, all, all of those kinds of things. And then of course, we want you to feel like this is your home. So please bring the things that you expect to um, want to live with over the next few months. It's important to note that you are sharing, some of you are sharing a space with others. And so please be cognizant of the amount of equipment that you're gonna bring. So whatever you bring, you're gonna have to take home eventually. So that's something to consider. So your move in time and date has been emailed to you to your Zag, uh, Zag mail account. And so please check your Zag mail for details regarding what day and time you've been slotted to move in. Should you have a problem with moving in on that specific day and time, we ask that you contact Housing and Residence Life either through uh, our email or through our phone number and we will work with you to identify an alternate time and date uh, in order to check in. Uh, those alternate check-in times and days are going to be monitored for the number of people who will be moving in. So. We can't promise exactly when that time will be, but we will work with you to identify an appropriate time. So of course, living on campus is going to be different as Dr. Porterfield had mentioned, um, but we are dedicated to creating a very vibrant community in our residence halls and with our students. And so that might look like virtual engagement with your your peers in the residence halls, it might look like small group gatherings. Um, our resident assistants have been trained to build relationships with the students who live in the residence halls, either on a one-on-one -on -one or in a small group basis. So you will have plenty of opportunity to engage with your fellow Zags in the community. So uh, some common questions that we're getting, where can I find the size of my room? We have room dimensions on our website for each of the residence halls that we have. And so please go to the Housing and Residence Life website and then look for your specific hall and that will provide that information for you. Are you required to wear masks in your own residence hall? Um, yes, we're asking that all of our students are wearing face coverings in common spaces while on campus, and that includes the common spaces in your residence hall. When you are in your private room with your roommate, you do not need to wear a face covering. I filled out the survey already. Do I need to tell housing my plans as well? So if you have uh, indicated that you're coming to campus or not coming to campus, that information has been shared with us. And if we uh, see that you've marked that you're not coming to campus, we cancel your contract at that point. If you have uh, questions about what you've marked um, and uh, need to discuss your plans with us further, please call Housing and Residence Life and we will work with you to um, make adjustments to your booking. Now we're just going to go over a few reminders. So just some general reminders that you will be receiving small group information soon. Um, make sure and check out the return to campus guide. I know it's a lengthy document that will really help you gauge um, what campus will look like. Um, make sure you're checking out your class schedule, seeing whether your classes are in person, hybrid, or online. Um, Zags Ignite is our kind of job posting website and jobs will be posted August 12th. So really make sure you're on that because on campus jobs go really fast. And then our first year experience newsletter, our last one is going out August 15th. And then some reminders for in-person students, um, register for programming, that's also coming out next week. You can start purchase, purchasing parking passes on August 15th. And then if you wanna send more bulkier items to the mailroom, that works great for move-in. And then for virtual, you're, you, will be, ugh, you will be receiving your orientation packet um, via mail, which has like your orientation shirt um, and your ZAG card and more information. And then for transfer students, make sure you're registering for the specific transfer and returning adults um, orientation. And then as always, do your how to zag guide, your August to do's for a chance to win some zag swag. Um, and congrats to our winner, Emily, for July. And then we had our pet contest in July. Um, hopefully some of you guys submitted your pets. It was super fun for our office to look at all those. So those are some of our finalists. And then the winner was Brandon the Corgi. 
And then lastly, if you have any questions, make sure you're putting them in the Q&A section and not the chat. Um, and then follow us on our social medias. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at first year experience at gonzaga.edu. Okay, and now we're going through our questions. So first we had a question. We had bulky, bulky items mailed to the mailroom. Where do we pick these up? Um, Kelly or John, do you wanna take this question? Sure, the mail room is available for, your, um, for you to pick up your items. They have the, the space laid out so that folks can observe social distancing while they pick up their packages. So it's actually in the mail room itself. And so you just head on over. It's actually in the same building where you would park in order to come to the one-stop shop, so. And I'll also add to that, you do need your Zag card to pick up your mail. So that means you need to come over to orientation station and we do want to encourage you to come during your window so that you are able to have the correct packets out available at orientation station for a check-in, Zag card, and housing. Yeah. And then someone had a question, do you know how many freshmen are attending in person um, and also total students? Um, Dr. Porterfield or Kelly, do you have the answer to that? Or if we're giving that information out? I think as of Friday, there were 752 students um, signed up for in-person orientation. And I believe there were 159 signed up for virtual. That's, those are the last numbers I have. So I think those are pretty close. And then will there be pre-orientation programs, Kelly? So we will not be hosting pre-orientation programs as they are wrapped into our orientation programming. So you will have the opportunity to engage with GU Outdoors who does Goob or the Center for Community Engagement who does RISE, which is the community service pre-orientation program. All of these will be available in person as a part of the sessions that you get to choose between one and five. Perfect, and then someone had kind of a clarifying question. Um, if the in-person orientation program begins the same day you move in, but it's all day, when do you move in? Kelly, do you want to take that one? Or John? So you'll be moving in during your move-in window. Your programming starts at 4.30 in the afternoon on the day that you move in. And of course, as John shared earlier, if you do need accommodations with your move-in time, that's something to reach out to housing for. And then kind of to go off that, they're just clarifying if you move in Thursday, you attend the How to Zag sessions on Monday morning from 8 to 12. Yes, if you move in Thursday, you will attend the How to Zag sessions on Friday from 8 to 12. And then the next question is, I sent a bunch of items to GU to pick up at mail services before I realized there'd be different time slots for move in. Both my roommate and I need access to those items. However, I don't move in until the last afternoon slot on Friday. Is there any way we can get access to those items Friday morning, even though my move in window isn't until the afternoon? That's a good question. So I would say that, um, if the items are already mailed in, uh, I would um, perhaps work with uh, campus mail room to see what they're able to do for you. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work with you to try to make sure that you get your packages in a timely fashion. I, I would call both mail room and then if you don't get resolution at that point, uh, reaching out to Housing Residence Life would be uh, your next step. And then Justin put the link to the mail services in the chat so you can find their contact information there. And then next question, are families allowed to come say goodbye the day after move-in or do they have to say goodbye on the student's move-in day? Kelly, do you wanna take that one? So we are definitely encouraging that folks who no longer need to be on campus after you move in, be able to leave the campus so that we have the space available for other families and students who are starting to move in. So of course, we're not gonna come up to you and say, excuse me, person, you were from yesterday, you need to leave. We encourage you to make the best plans for you and your family. So we have that window for you all to have dinner. And then the first program will be happening either at nine o'clock or 10 o'clock that morning. So if you do choose to have breakfast with your family off campus, 
we encourage you to be able to find a time to provide your goodbyes and then jump into orientation programming. Um, Kelly, there was another question. If you move in on Wednesday, what does Thursday and Friday entail? So if you're moving in on Wednesday, you're going to basically have the same schedule all the way Thursday through Sunday, which will be how to zag sessions in the morning, lunch with your small group, and then one to five will be the affinity sessions as well as the experiential programming. Then you'll have dinner followed by nighttime programming, and that will occur over the couple of days. And I know there was another question also in the chat who said, if you move in on Friday, are you doing less programming since you're coming in on Friday? And your programming will actually extend into the first six weeks as a part of the How to Zag series. So don't worry, anything that you might not participate on the Thursday or Friday, you will still have opportunities during your first six weeks. And then someone had another question, do we need to purchase books before we get to campus or should we check with our professors to see which ones are mandatory before purchasing? Do you want me to take this one, Kelly? Yeah, um, so you can totally purchase your books before arriving on campus. I always do. Um, rarely do professors put books that, um, books on like the Zag shop that aren't, they aren't planning on using. Um, but that's kind of a preference thing. I know a lot of people who purchase before and then a lot of people who wait, um, but definitely purchase within that first week of classes. And then someone had another question. Is it too late to change dining plans? Um, I can take that one as well. Um, it's not too late. You actually have within the first two weeks of the start of classes to change your dining plan and it's super easy through ZagWeb. If I move in on Friday morning at 8 a.m. and have orientation activities Saturday, will I have any set programming on Sunday or is that a free day? Kelly, do you wanna take that? Yes, you will have programming the rest of the time that you are on campus. So anytime you're on campus between August 26th through 31st, you will be in a program with new student orientation. Another question, will COVID protocols and expectations be present and discuss during orientation. For example, will students who live in um, residence halls be told that masks have to be worn in the bathrooms except when showering, brushing teeth, um, washing and shaving? Um, they said they just feel like Gonzaga isn't specific and it can be left open for interpretation. Yeah, so we will be sharing details around COVID protocol during the floor meeting with our students. There is also, Christiana, can maybe answer this, but we are also planning on having a COVID education tent out on Herrick Lawn in addition to the check-in for new student orientation and housing. Yeah, John, so we will have representatives uh, from Health and Counseling Services and from our, our COVID action response team available in the tent um, specific to COVID-19 um, and also just general health and counseling services as well. So, um, if you have questions or if you're not sure uh, what those protocols are, you can definitely connect with us at that tent um, during orientation. Perfect, thank you. Um, Kelly, this is a question for you. Are we required to participate in virtual orientation slash attend each session if we're gonna be taking classes remotely? They're asking due to a time zone difference and other time conflicts. So we highly encourage you to attend orientation. This is going to give you your connections to other students, staff, faculty, and resources that are available to you as a virtual student. So please contact first year experience at gonzaga.edu with your specific uh, situation and we'll work with you to make sure that you can join to the best level of your comfort. Thank you. Um, are you requiring negative COVID tests before we arrive? If not, why not? This be a Dr. Porterfield or Christiana question. I, I can field that one. Um, no, we are not requiring negative COVID tests uh, prior to arrival or at arrival. Uh, we do have the requirement for uh, students to quarantine for a seven day period of time before they come to campus, which will help us uh, better mitigate uh, COVID activity as students are arriving to campus, but we do have testing uh, plans and, and strategies in place. So we have accessible testing at Health and Counseling Services. 
Uh, we're doing something called targeted testing where if we do experience COVID on campus, which very well may be the case, uh, that we are prepared to uh, perhaps um, do testing with groups or clusters that we would have concerns about. So if there was a residence hall uh, that had multiple students impacted, we would be prepared and working with Spokane Regional Health District um, to do additional testing. And we are also continuing to plan for uh, uh, different uh, uh, possibilities for testing as well. Uh, we do want to have a, a well-rounded approach to that, but there is no requirement for testing prior to coming to campus. Perfect, thank you. Um, John, a question for you. If your roommate chooses to not attend in person, will you be reassigned another roommate or will you have a single room? No, at this point, we are not reassigning folks to rooms. That being said, uh, we may see um, some level of uh, shifting of our housing plan, but at this point, we are moving forward with no intention of putting uh, other students in that room. So you'll have a single. Um, if I move in at 8 a.m. and my roommate is moving in later that day, do I need to leave the room while he is moving in? Yes, that is the request that we're making of all students so that students and families who are helping them move in can have um, access to the room. As soon as uh, all parents have or family members, whoever is helping the student move in, have uh, left the room, then from that point forward, the roommates can be in the room at the same time. They're now uh, considered a family unit. And so we're, we're not uh, expecting those folks to wear masks ne uh, near each other as well. Um, another question for you, John, if we don't come to campus in the fall semester, but want to come for spring, will they still have a room available to them? Yes, we will, we will have a room available. Uh, it may not be the same room that you've been assigned at this point. That may need to shift, but we will be, uh, everyone that, um, particularly first and second year students, will be accommodated. Um, do freshmen usually have opportunities for jobs? Or do jobs usually go to upper class men? I could take that one. Um, I feel like it doesn't it doesn't matter like your class standing for jobs. It's just kind of who applies first and who has the most experience necessarily for that job. I know a lot of first year students who get jobs. Um, I was one of them. So there's definitely a lot of opportunities. Um, are students allowed to leave campus? Dr. Porterfield, do you want to take that one? Sure. Sorry, I was muted there. Um, we, there's no prohibition on students leaving the campus, but we, you know, you will find in our programming and our, some of the training that we'll do, we'll be encouraging students to make wise choices. And that means to really think about and plan well. Um, even talking to students about concepts of social bubbles, which is, sort of finding your small group and being accountable to each other and looking out for each other. That's a Zags help Zags kind of mentality that we have. But the idea is that, and, and really to be honest, absolutely honest about that, there would be absolutely no way to monitor that and know that because we don't have a closed campus. The campus is not surrounded by a fence or a gate or anything like that. So students do come and go, but we are, we're asking students obviously to really think about that, prepare well, and to understand what's expected of them when they return to campus. Thank you. Um, Kelly, a question for you. What will orientation look like for a local, local commuter student? So we will have you follow the same in-person orientation experience and your check-in will be on Friday, August 26th. You'll be receiving an email with all of this information on Tuesday, August 11th. Another question for you, Kelly. They're asking where can they register for campus tours once they arrive on campus? So you will actually get the opportunity to pre-register for campus tours as a part of the orientation registration going out to in-person students on Tuesday, August 11th. At this point, the tours are solely for students so that you get the opportunity to meet other first year students and it, they will be guided by our orientation lead. And there was another question. Um, should we bring a trash can to our residence hall room or are they provided? I can quickly answer that. They are provided. You'll get both a trash can and a recycling bin. 
Um, Kelly, how will students find out the Zoom meeting information for their classes? So your individual faculty will be communicating with you so that you have the information available for your Zoom classes. So I would definitely say to make sure to reach out to your faculty by the first week of uh, before orientation, so around August 23rd or 24th, if you have not received any communication from them yet regarding how they will be engaging with you. Also, the other place that you can look is Blackboard. That is our learning management system. And you can find that. Uh, Lexi, what is the link for Blackboard? Ooh, I don't know. Um, maybe Justin can put it in the chat. It's fabulous. We'll have just put it in the chat and when you log into Blackboard, it'll have all of your courses in there that are set up on Blackboard and you might be able to find the information there as well. Um, another question, what will hybrid classes look like? No, did we just answer that question? No. What will hybrid classes look like meet on a weekly basis like every, every, like every other day? I think that's also the same as what Kelly was saying. Um, it's kind of like professor by professor basis and they'll reach out to you with that information. Uh, another question, how do students set up a meeting, meeting with their advisor? Um, Kelly, do you want to take that? So your advisor meetings will most likely happen during the first week of class, August 31st will be the advising day and your advisors will be reaching out to you as a part of orientation programming. So you don't have to worry about anything. Our small groups will guide you through that process. Other question, um, how do we know what school supplies are recommended to have? Um, I think that's just like a personal thing for you. Like if you like using binders versus folders or notebooks versus loose leaf paper, just really all up to you. Um, someone asked, should we already have received an email from their small group leader? I can also just answer this. No, you should, no one has received an email. Um, you should be receiving one very closely up to the day before orientation, preferably that week, maybe the week before. Um, another question, will we have time to organize our items and room during move-in or will we have to drop our stuff off at our room and then go on to the next event? John, would you like to take that question? Sure, so the move-in window is three hours. And if you come early in that move-in window, then you'll have a full three hours with your, your um, uh, whoever's helping you get your stuff into your space. And so we would encourage folks to um, think about that. If you, know, if you have a lot of stuff, you know, maybe come in early at, that, um, at the beginning of that window. Um, but at the same time, if you move in 11, uh, eight to 11, um, Largely, you won't have folks moving in from 11 to 1, and so you will have some extra buffer time in there. If you move in in the afternoon, you will have an extra half hour before your orientation um, uh, uh, program starts, and so you should have enough time to be able to get everything unpacked and, and somewhat settled, maybe not entirely settled, but somewhat settled. Um. Christina had a question, will the library be open? I can also just quickly answer this. Yes, it'll be open just for Gonzaga. It's technically a public library, but it'll be open to just Gonzaga students, staff, and faculty. Um, she had another question. Um, John, do you wanna take this? What does visitors look like for the residence halls? So we are asking that students um, not visit other residence halls or bring folks who do not live in their residence hall into their residence hall. So those spaces are just for the people who live in the community. Uh, there are plenty of places on campus to connect with other Zags who live in other spaces, whether it's Mulligan Field or the, the green spaces that we have on campus or Hemmingson, but uh, we are asking that um, people restrict their visitors. Kelly, a question for you. During dinner on our own, on our move-in day, are we able to leave campus with our families? Yes, you are welcome to leave campus. Uh, we do highly encourage that you potentially call ahead since here in Eastern Washington, restaurants are still having limited capacity or doing takeout only. So as you look for food options, please make sure that you do some homework. John, a question for you. Are the nightly hall meetings in the residence halls in person um, and where are they? 
they will be virtual. And so we will have the RAs send out a link to all of their students via their ZAG mail, uh, stating what time their meeting is going to start. And so everyone will be coming in virtually. Another question for you, John, how will virtual students participate in their living learning communities? So the living learning community programming is going to be put in, put on largely by our campus partners who support us in delivering thematic um, experiences for our students. So all of the students who are not coming to campus for the fall, but who signed up for a living learning community will receive the same link to that virtual experience from our campus partners and they'll be able to participate in those experiences as well. Thank you. Um, should we plan to stay on campus from our move-in day through Sunday or, can, or will we have more time on the weekend to see our family? Kelly, I'm gonna toss this one to you. So we definitely encourage you to be able to participate to the fullest of your ability in new student orientation. Of course, we understand that being and saying goodbye to your family may be a longer process due to all the uncertainty around COVID, but we highly recommend you engage in all this programming because if you're not in that small group of 10 students and three other people do the same, then that group becomes even smaller. And we wanna make sure that you get the opportunity to engage with your friends and other Zags as you transition into campus. And I do also want to say that we are at two o'clock. Uh, not sure. I want to ask our panel: Would you all be able to stay on for a couple more? We have about thirty-nine questions left. Or if uh, some of you need to go, and we'll stay behind and do an answer to the best of our abilities. I can stay. Okay. Awesome. We'll continue. Um, where and how do you access the how to zag to do list? I can answer this question really fast. Um, if you search how to zag guide on Gonzaga University's webpage or Justin will throw it in the chat. Someone had a question regarding affinity groups. Kelly, um, when will they receive the email to select a group? Um, Tuesday, August 11th. And then another question for you, Kelly, um, when do you recommend parents leave campus? We're encouraging families to spend time with your student on your move-in day, and then after that, there'll be no further official programming for families on campus. Um, another question, where do we throw away cardboard boxes? And there should be a recycling bin next to every residence hall. John, can you confirm that? Yeah, okay. Um, another person had a question, when in August will they expect an email from their orientation leader and sometime the week before orientation or right before orientation? Um, where should they park the morning of check-in? Um, they're supposed to park in the park, so our parking garage. Um, if you go to a dining hall with someone who's not in your roommate, are you required to social distance with them? There, yeah, there will be, there'll be wayfinding signage on the floor and also you'll, you'll see that there'll be just like now when you go into a, a store or something like that, where they're asking people to stay six feet apart. So you're going to be, even when you enter, you're going to be asked to, to maintain physical distancing and face coverings. Um, if you're dining in um, and you're seating, you're going to be seated um, at a distance from an, another, um, the other at a six foot distance. And you're also or as close as we can manage that reasonably. And your other tables are gonna be spaced out a, while, a ways too. So the answer to the question is yes, that's, that physical distancing is gonna be a part of really every experience you have at the university in the fall. Um, Kelly, this would be a question for you. In regard to the free choice section of virtual orientation, will the breakout sessions last for the full duration of the full choice time block? No, those sessions will be uh, scheduled during that time block at some point between you, your small group leader, and your super group. So you'll be able to select the time that makes the best sense for you since we do understand that folks are in different time zones and have different things going on at home. Another question for you, Kelly, are the evening orientation sessions all virtual or will some be in person? 
all the evening programs will be virtual. This way we have an opportunity to have our virtual and our on-campus students be able to get to spend some time together in community. Another question, I understand that if students plan to leave campus for Thanksgiving, they are not to return for the remainder of the semester. Um, I ask if students choose to leave Spokane County prior to Thanksgiving, um, whether it be to visit home or vacation, um, what are the policies in place for such events? Dr. Portfield, do you want to take that? I see a theme here, <laughs> which questions I get. <laughs> uh, but no, I would say, look, there's not a, there is no prohibition. We're not, we're not preventing people from traveling, but we are encouraging students to do as little of it as possible. Um, that every time, you know, you make that, those trips, um, there is some additional exposure potential. And so, you know, all of our plans are really about mitigation. They're all about trying to reduce the probability. So um, we're really asking students to limit that and to try to, and, and part of that encouragement, of course, is that um, by Thanksgiving, you're going to be able to go home. So you're going to be able to go home a little bit earlier. So we're not going to prevent you from doing it, but we are going to ask that you limit it. Um, Kelly, a question for you. When do they find out what affinity groups they are in? So affinity groups will be a part of the registration process on Tuesday, August 11th. And I do also want to mention that our last question that we'll be answering was submitted at 159 by Derek. So that will be the last question that we answer live on here. And then all other questions, we will follow up with you individually uh, based on the person that submitted it. So ready for the next question. Um, who will be sending out Zoom meeting ID numbers to students for virtual orientation? Kelly? So you will receive uh, an informational packet that will have all of this information and it will be housed online. So this way you'll be able to just log in and click your Zoom link for your next sessions. Um, Kaylee had a question. If you choose to stay home and attend classes remotely, will your meal plan automatically cancel? And I think that's a yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. Um, someone is just clarifying that they will have their orientation schedules prior to move in. Yes, Kelly? Yes, and you can check online at this point. If you are in person, you already know the registration, uh, you already know the blocks. So in the morning, how to zag, lunch, followed by affinity sessions, followed by experiential sessions, dinner, nighttime programming. That will happen every day that you're on campus after move in. Uh, Dr. Porterfield, I'm going to throw this, or Christiana, um, what does the seven day seven <laughs> entail? What does that look like? I, I can respond to that. Um, the seven day quarantine is really just that we are asking you uh, prior to coming to campus, that seven days prior to arrival, that you are actually staying in your place of residence, that you are um, maintaining social distance from others besides those in your household um, and really being safe. Uh, monitoring yourself for symptoms like temperature, any uh, respiratory type of symptoms, and just taking as much precautions as you can and not interacting with others, um, especially outside of your household. So doing the best that you can uh, in that regard is going to be incredibly beneficial to, uh, to you and to other students as they all are, as you all are coming to campus. So it's really about just staying apart from others. Uh, and we know that that's uh, a big ask and that is uh, sometimes challenging, but it's really to promote and, and protect the health and safety of others uh, as well. And so we're asking Zags to do that uh, prior to coming. So thank you for your efforts in that regard, because um, I know it's, it's challenging. These, these times are definitely uh, stressful for all of us, but thanks for, for uh, doing that and for helping to keep others safe as well. Um, another question kind of similar, what are the repercussions for students who do not follow the rules in place for COVID-19? Um, who will be ensuring that students are wearing masks and socially distant? So there's a whole range of things there, right? So from, from somebody just forgetting a mask, which would be a non-compliance issue to somebody maybe doing something a little more egregious, like having a big party off campus or something like that. So the range of uh, accountability 
or options for accountability vary quite a bit. Um, but let me just say it this way. Um, you know, we understand that students are going to make mistakes, but it's important that all of us are accountable. So there will, there will always be a conversation. Um, and if there are repeat offenses, um, then, you know, obviously the expectations relative to sanctions are progressive. If it's a really egregious situation where a student is knowingly put other, other students at risk, that's not a good situation. And that you can expect that the, the outcomes in, in terms of sanctions are gonna, um, you know, are gonna fit the gravity of the situation. So they're gonna be more serious. I don't, you know, my, my belief is that um, ZAG students uh, care about these issues and that they're um, gonna help hold each other accountable. And we're gonna really rely on our students as full partners. So we're gonna have student leaders messaging. Uh, we're gonna have student leaders um, helping to communicate in social media, um, early adoption, role modeling. Uh, we're going to really work hard, I think, to, with students to talk about what these social bubbles might look like. Because look, we understand that students are going to socialize. Um, you know, it's not reasonable to expect that they're not. But there's a way to do that and be safe. And that's in these small groups where we can um, hold one another accountable. So we're going to work with students to develop some of those strategies. But yes, um, the Resolution Center, which is our student conduct area, will receive reports and they'll follow up on those reports. I, what I don't want you to hear in that response is that we automatically always leap to something punitive. That this is an educational process, right? But at some point, um, it, you know, if students really are not learning that lesson, then of course, you know, our expectations ramp up a little bit in terms of sanctions. Thank you. Another question, sort of similar to that about COVID, um, that they've been seeing other colleges asking students to put together a COVID like to go bag in case you have to be quarantined. You know, the bag would already contain things like clothes, chargers, medications, snacks, towels, all that kind of stuff. Um, so do you students put together a bag like that? If so, would you provide a list of what should be included? So I could maybe start the answer to that. And if other people have information to share that's more specific, that would be great. But I, I actually think that's a really great idea. It's a, it's a very um, smart and proactive idea. And basically, um, if somebody ended up being in an isolation or quarantine situation, the, you know, we believe that the, the length of time, maximum length of time would be about 14 days. And so to be prepared for that would be to um, be making sure that you have clothing for, for that length of time, um, that you have you know, toiletries, uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, things like that. Um, and that you would also have um, you know, supplies for monitoring your own health. And the, probably the most important thing would be uh, a thermometer because you would be not only just routinely for daily symptom checking, uh, be checking your temperature, but obviously if you were in an isolation or quarantine situation, uh, you would be doing that as well. So having a digital thermometer is going to be a really important thing to have and to maybe put into that uh, that care package for the potential of isolation or quarantine. So those are probably the, the main things, of course, masks. Um, that is going to be so important. If you are in a quarantine situation, which let's just keep our fingers crossed that that is so minimal, uh, but but we know that this is out that COVID is out there, and and we will face some of those uh, challenges. But if you are in a quarantine scenario, you are going to have to have face coverings and be maintaining, maintaining uh, distance from others, separating yourself from others. So the, the face masks and face coverings are going to be important in case there was ever a time where you were like passing in a hallway or, or walking into a bathroom space or something of that nature. Uh, but hopefully um, that will be very, very, very limited if those cases are isolation and quarantine specific. Um, so, so, you know, sanitizing wipes, disinfecting wipes, things of that nature would also be great to put in some sort of care package, not, not just for isolation and quarantine, but for really coming to campus and for keeping your own space safe and um, uh, as safe as you can and for protecting yourself and, and perhaps others uh, that are in that space. 
but I do think that packing a little care kit or, or bag uh, for in preparation for an isolation or quarantine situation is a really proactive idea. Um, if others have information about that too, uh, please feel free to, to chime in. Okay, perfect. Thank you. That was a great answer. Um, someone had a question. Um, I believe they have a Monday only class on the 31st. So will they be able to leave night programming of orientation early on that day? So we will not have any nighttime programming on Monday, August 31st, because we do know that classes start. So you should be good. Uh, John, a question for you. When I picked my room in the housing portal, I was required to pick a bed. Um, how do I know which bed is mine? Now, that's just an internal process. So when you arrive on campus and if you're the first person there, you get to pick your bed. If you're the second person there, you get to pick the remaining bed. So um, that's, that's really kind of up to you. Yeah, I had a conversation with my roommate freshman year about that. Um, so you can also do that way either. Um, given the changes in the way dining will be offered to students living on campus, is there any advice on a dining plan choice? If the dining options will be more limited, should a student choose a plan with more bulldog bucks for purchasing snacks between meals? So it would be important to look at the options that are available on the Zag dining portal and so um, there are lots of different options available for our students that really will speak to their, their needs while they're on campus. I would say that what we find is a lot of students arrive on campus having one meal plan. After about a week of uh, being on campus, they learn what their eating habits are going to be and they can make a change at that point to another plan that, that suits their needs much better. And that flexibility exists currently and will continue to exist for the first couple of weeks after folks arrive on campus. Yeah, I actually did that during my first year too. I switched my meal plan during the first week and it's super easy. So I recommend maybe just picking the one you think is the best and then don't worry about it if you have to change. Uh, with Washington still being in phase two, is there a chance that GU may go fully remote? Dr. Porterfield, do you want to take that one? Well, you know, some, that, that's unfortunately a decision that may not even be ours to make. And so there is certainly a possibility if the state were to impose, um, you know, were to, to step back to a phase one, uh, then we would be forced to make some choices. There, we've learned already that with some new guidance for higher education that there can be some adaptations and changes to the phases. So it's difficult to predict that. Um, I would say where, you know, what we're trying to do is provide options so that you have choices to make, that you can make. And I think the fact that we're opening um, is indicative of where we are, which is that we intend to be open and that it's our intention to do that. But it's unpredictable. You know, th the, the, the virus is aggressive and it's really difficult to know where we're going to be in a few months and we'll continue to monitor it. And I think the best we can offer is that um, we've tried to plan for lots of different scenarios and circumstances, and we'll continue to try to communicate um, as transparently and as often as we can about where we see things. Our intention is to be open, but uh, I just, I don't think anybody could give a hard guarantee at this point. Thank you. Um, John, a question for you. If my roommate and I don't come to campus in the fall but wish to do in the spring, will they be able to request each other as roommates again? As rooms are available. So we don't know exactly what will be available in the spring and, and we will continue to offer rooms and work with uh, student requests. Um, unfortunately, we won't be able to guarantee that two people will be able to find a room together. Um, for those who are going virtual this fall, will they have a new billing statement that excludes the meal and housing fees? Meal and housing fees will be removed from their bill as soon as we process their, um, their requests to cancel their bookings. And so it may take until the next billing cycle to show up, but those changes will be represented on their bill. 
so one just one point of clarification there um if that means virtual meaning remote students going to be remote i think that is absolutely true there there is certainly the potential that we will have some students residing on campus in a residence hall and enrolled in um in uh, virtual courses or online courses so in that respect, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding the nuance of the question. But if it isn't, if it is truly remote and a student student is not here, then John is absolutely um, correct. Um, how will labs be taught for those who are virtual as opposed to those who are in class? So academic advising after we are able to get your uh, decision, which again, please make sure you fill out the uh, survey that was sent to you. It's due on Sunday. We're gonna use that to be able to look through your schedule. So if you are virtual, you may have your class just move to another semester. Or depending on the faculty and the science course, the faculty will be working with you. So again, it's based on a case by case basis as we identify what your plans are so that we can make the best accommodations for you. So please fill out that survey if you have not. And if you have any additional questions, you can go ahead and set up a meeting with an academic advisor right now and set up a Zoom meeting or a phone call to talk through your schedule. And we'll have Justin put that link back in the chat again for you. Will workouts facilities be available? So will the RFC be open? Yes, the RFC will be open at this point and they have spaced out their um, equipment and it will be on a reservation by reservation basis. And so students, um, there will be a system by which students will reserve a particular piece of equipment for a particular amount of time. I think the time slots are 45 minutes. And so that gives 30 minutes worth of workout and 15 minutes worth of cleaning the machine um, after the use of the machine. And so, um, but at this point, um, barring any changes from the state, the um, uh, exercise facility will be available for students. That is an area though that um, gyms are, and fitness centers are areas that Spokane Regional Health is looking really closely at. So I don't know that there'll be changes. I think I, I just wanna, I wanna make sure that you know there could very well be changes there. Um, that's an area of concern for them. So just know that that's been a part of our most recent conversations. Uh, will there be other study spaces available besides the library, um, such as study rooms for reservations? I'm assuming they're asking if the Hemmingson study rooms will be available. So yes, there will be opportunities for you to reserve a space on campus to be able to study in. The library will be open and we will be encouraging you if you are studying in a space that is open to continue to wear your face covering and to wipe your space down before and after you leave and those cleaning supplies will be offered for those spaces as well and I do want to say that was our last question from Derek that was submitted at 159 we do have some additional questions which will follow up with you directly via email but I want to go ahead and thank all of our panelists for participating today and absolutely give a huge shout out to Lexi for navigating and moderating this great chat. We answered 83 questions today and we understand you'll probably have a lot more questions as you get ready to come to campus. So please reach out to First Year Experience at firstyearexperience at gonzaga.edu or contact the new Zag hotline at 509-313 7040. And of course, check the Zagon website, which will have all the latest information and also check out our social media. We appreciate this time with you. Thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you to Justin for running tech. This will be recorded and posted online and we'll send you a follow up email mid next week so that you have a copy of the chat questions as well as the recording. Again, thank you very much and go Zags.